Hello. There's a well-known expression in the mastering community. It's not how loud you make it, it's how you make it loud. Um, I didn't come up with this. The first time I heard it was from Bob Katz. I'm not sure if he came up with it, but I think it's a really interesting idea and one that is really worth looking into. And in this video, I'm going to show you a song that I think is uh, a good example of what this expression means and why it's something that you should consider when you're mastering your music or having your music mastered for you. So the song I'm using in this demo is All The Same by North To Alaska. And this is another file that's come from Mike Senior's excellent Cambridge Music Technology website. I'll put a link to that in the description. There are free multitracks and mixes that you can download there to experiment with yourself. And the first thing that I did when I was mastering this song, as always, was to bring the level up to where I think it sits well. And I did that based on one of the loudest sections of the song. So I'll just play an example of that. I'm using the TC Electronic MD4 uh, mastering package here. So I've got some gain here in the input section. I've got some very subtle EQ. I've got a little bit of gentle multiband compression and I'm using the limiter on the output section. So I'm gonna just play you an example. And I'm pretty happy with the way that that's sounding, even with those very simple moves. But one thing I noticed was that I felt like this section here loses some energy. It, it drifts away from my attention slightly in comparison to the, to the really big choruses. So the first thing I did was experiment with some automation just to increase the, the drama really there. So let me play that with the automation so you can hear how that works. So that section is working much better for me now. And the nice thing about doing it this way is that I didn't have to lift the level of the overall song. Rather than boosting the gain up all the way through, which would have added an, quite a bit of extra compression and limiting to this loud section here, just bringing up that one section that needed to be, it's not like you hear a, a change in the gain, um, but it just uh, has a really nice effect of keeping that section present and keeping our attention. So that's one strategy immediately for making things loud. You don't have to turn the whole thing up by the same amount. It's only a change of one and a half dB. And remember that's prior to the compression and the limiting that I have. But I think that works really well. But listening through to more of the song, I did notice something that kind of raised a question in my mind. Um, I'll play the section in question. And you can see that here on my dynameter plugin up here. Uh, it's pushing well into the red and we're getting a minimum peak to loudness ratio at that section with the really intense vocals of only 7 dB, which is lower than I would normally like to go. Now, I'm not telling you to master or mix with your eyes, but what I do think is helpful about a meter like this is that it enables us to ask questions. And in this case, my question was, well, 
have I just pushed the whole thing too loud? So the first thing that I did was went back in here and reduced the uh, gain here by, let's try one and a half dB and see how that feels. probably needs to come down even slightly more than that. So that kind of fixed the way things look. But like I say, I don't like working based on the way that things look. And actually listening to it, I missed some of the intensity and some of the buzz that I was getting from that extra loudness. So next question is, is this just a situation where I should ignore the meters? Um, you know, I want to do what's right for the music. But... <laughs> The parameters in Dynameter were chosen based on my own experience mastering, and many times I found that I prefer things when I follow my own advice. So I wanted to take this experiment a little bit further. So I took a little bit of time away from the track because I was concerned that perhaps, you know, it happens all the time. You, you master the first song on an album or you come to a song fresh, it sounds fantastic, and you push everything just a little bit hard. So. I gave myself a break to let my ears refresh and reset and then I came back and started listening again just with this lower level with the idea that actually this was the right level for the track and I was fooling myself about that, that need for more buzz or intensity during the loudest sections. And almost immediately one of the things I noticed uh, which I found interesting was that perhaps the stereo image was a little bit narrow. I really wanted the song to envelop me, to kind of wrap around me and overwhelm me in some way during that loudest section, and I didn't feel it was quite happening. And sure enough, when I took a look at the phase correlator, I could see that there was scope to open things out a little bit. Uh, let me show you the phase scope here. Now, for plenty of material, that would be absolutely fine. But for a, a big, aggressive song like this, I felt like some more stereo width would be appropriate. So um, I decided to try that as an experiment. I'm keeping this current version of the master so that I can compare it later on. So um, here is the version that I ended up with. And you can see that I've just added here uh, nothing fancy. This is just the Steinberg Stereo Enhancer plugin. And I've just dialed in an increase of 10% on the stereo width. And you'll also see that the overall gain of this has been pulled back to 7.5 dB at the input to all of the processing. So I tried that and I liked it. And then almost immediately I felt, actually, I think this could do with some extra high frequency EQ to really make things sound balanced. So I added in a little bit of that. You can see this boost here. So what's that? Only an extra dB, um, just up in the, the high frequencies here. That's at eight kilohertz. And now when I play that section of the song, here's how it sounds. So you can see there was a little extra stereo spread there. And this time I'm getting a peak to loudness ratio that I'm more comfortable with, 8 dBs instead of 7 dBs, which was the case back down here originally. But most importantly, that buzz is back. That intensity is back for that section. And then the other change that I made is, let me just reset this back to, we had 5.5 dBs gain there for this section. I decided to increase the gain on the quieter sections. Remember, I've pulled the overall loudness going into the processing back by 2 dB in comparison to where I was to begin with. So it makes sense that I might need a little bit extra juice in these sections that I felt were losing energy. So I'll just play that to you so you can hear how that works. Actually, I'll, I'll keep this is the, the final version. <laughs> Face. It burns 
And just while we're talking about the details, I want to show you one other decision that I made. You can see here, I've got this reduction in level immediately after this section of the song here. Initially, I tried it here. Let me just show you how that sounds. So you want to hear my breathing? I want to hear my breathing. That sounds okay, but it doesn't quite have the impact that it did originally. So I moved that transition back. Again, we're only talking about a difference of, I think, a dB and a half in total, two dBs. But take a listen to this version. Breathing. I wanna hear my breathing. That's got the impact I want. This section explodes there in just the way that it does in the original. And it's a good example that if you choose your crossfades in the right places, people simply won't notice them happening. I did something slightly different earlier on in the song. Uh, let me play you this one. Your doubt is never around. Your doubt, doubt, doubt is never around. Again, the slight reduction in level there, I think, actually suits the down, down, down lyric and keeps the, the maximum impact of that entry as well. Then later in the song, I didn't feel that those changes were necessary. The balance of these worked really well as was, I think. You never change, yeah, you just stay the same. You never change, yeah, you just Never change, cause you never try. But that's alright, to stay away from me. So there you go. Those are the decisions that I made while mastering this song. For me, it's a fantastic example of the overall loudness not being the important thing. The important thing is how you achieve that loudness or how you achieve that perceived loudness. Let me just line up a comparison of these two versions for you so that you can hear what I mean. So if I... If we go for the, the version I finally settled on here, and let's play that really loud section. And for me, this new version has just as much energy and intensity as that original version had just as much buzz as the original master which uh, I thought was okay at the time. I think you'll agree it doesn't feel to me like we've lost anything like 2db of level comparing these two versions and I really prefer the final result. The extra stereo image width and that EQ tweak have more than compensated for that difference and remember I wouldn't have tried those tweaks if I hadn't decided to pay attention to the dynameter reading. That's why it's valuable for me and why meters in general, I think, are useful. Noticing that prompted me to ask the questions that helped me discover a better way to achieve the result that I was looking for. And in fact, when I came to measure the loudness of these two different masters of the same song, you can see that there's less than half a dB's difference in the overall, the integrated loudness between them. But in fact, it's the slightly quieter one that sounds better when you compare them. And we've avoided this extra crush that we had in the very loud sections. Now, 
Neither of these masters are super loud by modern standards, but they're right in the centre of what I consider the loudness sweet spot, both for quality and for results on audio streaming services. Both of these are going to be reduced in level by less than 3 dB to fit the distribution loudness of all the major streaming services. So they're going to sound fantastic there, and they're going to sound fantastic on CD as well. And that, in a nutshell, is what I wanted to show you. There's much more to loudness than just pushing the level up against a compressor and a limiter. You need to think about the EQ choices, you need to think about stereo image, and you also need to think about the internal dynamics of the song, the balance between the sections. I can imagine you might be thinking, it's not up to the mastering engineer to decide how loud the verse or the chorus should be, but I think it's up to us to have empathy for what the artist is trying to achieve and help them get as close to that as possible. And it's very common when you're mixing to have the monitor gain set a good deal louder. That means that you would actually be listening to these loud sections of the song when mixing much louder than we are in a mastering situation. And then when you hear the verse sections in comparison, they would probably sound plenty loud enough. It's when you change your mindset and move into the mastering phase, when you're thinking about things in terms of songs in comparison to each other, songs in comparison to everything else that's out there, that you might suddenly realise, ah, I need to make these little adjustments. And of course, we could go back to the mix and make these tweaks. But I think these changes here have been perfectly effective implemented in the mastering stage, and that is uh, quicker and more straightforward than going back and asking for a mix revision. Of course, I discuss it with the client to make sure that they were happy as well and get their approval. But as always, in mastering, the goal is to make the music sound the best it can possibly be. And if that involves some slightly more creative approaches to achieving high perceived loudness while keeping a really nice balance between loudness and dynamics, I'm completely happy to work that way. It's not how loud you make it, it's how you make it loud. So there you go. I hope that was helpful or useful. Uh, of course, you might have a different opinion about which version of the mastered song sounds better, which method you prefer to achieve a feeling of loudness. I'm not really trying to tell you which way to work on things, just to make you aware of the different factors that can come into play and how they influence the way that the music sounds and feels so that you can get the best possible results when you're mastering your music or having it mastered for you. If you enjoyed this video, you might also like the free PDF that I've put together. It's called the Home Mastering Guide, and it walks you through what, in my opinion, are the six essential steps you need to take when you're mastering your music to be able to release it with complete confidence. It's completely free, and you can get your copy at homemasteringguide.com. My name is Ian Shepherd. Thanks for listening.